Hey, dog lovers. Welcome to Have Dog Will Travel. I'm Christy Vaughn. And I'm Josh Henry, and thank you for joining us for episode five. We are here with Jackie Anise and Maria Rizuda, who are the owners and operators of Urban Tree Cidery in Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies, hello, and thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Uh, our pleasure. Go ahead and introduce yourself so we can identify the, the voice with the name and who's who. <laughs> hey, I'm Maria. And I'm Jackie. Excellent. So we are here at Urban Tree, which is a dog-friendly establishment. Is that accurate? Yes, that yes, is absolutely yes, And I would like to say <laughs> Good, it's, it been it's awkward more it than, well, yeah, considering <laughs> we brought Sadie with us this yeah. time. I'd like to say it's more than dog-friendly. I've observed you guys are very welcoming of dogs, so it's not like you just sit out on the patio with your dog. You welcome dogs. Is that correct? We do. I mean, Jackie and I bring our dogs to work with us pretty much every day, so they're, they're known around town as the cider dogs. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> So tell us a little bit more about your dogs, the cider dogs. <laughs> well, I have Jackie has um, a Yorkie, a teacup Yorkie, and then I have a Weimaraner um, who pretty much drinks cider off the floor a good part of the day, <laughs> every day. Um, she probably spends a lot of time slightly intoxicated, but she loves coming to work with me every day. Sounds like a good gig. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah that's again. If you come to our front door, you will be greeted very loudly, but very happily and with wagging tails. Oh, All of our normal yeah. delivery people know that, and they... Oh can't wait to say hello oh, you think the fedex great. man really feels that way <laughs> 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 or the poor male lady who sometimes looks like i'm not getting out of the truck today yeah, yeah no. elsa true. elsa is a sweet wine she just has a really aggressive bark so people are afraid of her sadie we're we're here we have sadie with us today um we're giving stella a break and she's under the table and her tail is banging into the mic stands, uh, but she's very, very happy right now. She's so, so kind happy. Of she, she's getting all the loves and, and, <laughs> and the pets, so she's good. Hi. Well, let's uh, kick it off. We have a few questions for you ladies. Okay. Sure, shoot. All right, so did both of you grow up with dogs? And if so, or if not, when did you become a dog lover? So Jackie and I are sisters, and we're 16 years apart. Um, you can tell she's the older wow. one. No, I'm not. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely apparent that I'm the older one. But um, so I was 15 when she, when she was mm-hmm. born. We did not have pets growing up. Um, when I left the house... My mom and, was into cats. Yeah, my mom, our mom was okay. into cats. We, yeah. never had, we never had dogs. Um, it wasn't until after I, was, I left the house, probably in my mid-20s, I got my first dog. How about you? Yeah, um, Kira is actually my first dog, the Aww. teacup Yorkie that I have here. Um, and actually, how I got her was because of Maria's first daughter. Yeah. So we um, we just keep getting dogs. So now, so once I hit my twenties, we started with a Labradoodle, um, and then from there we got a, a Yorkie, um, and then Jackie came with me to get the Yorkie that day, and that's when she got Kira. So Aww. we both we went in for one dog, we left with two. Yeah, totally not planned, um, but. She's my, I don't have kids. She's my baby. But that, I mean, yeah, that's so, how it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She does. hopped in my lap. She picked me. All the magic happened and I and wasn't that's how it happens. without her. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then from that, you got Then we rescued, one. then we rescued a dog. Um, she was just, there was a, a, a dog that had babies uh, in a creek here in Atlanta. And these puppies were just on the side of the creek bed and somebody brought them in and my daughter just so happened to be there. She was like seven at the time, and she said, "I'm not leaving without one of these puppies." Aww. So we went from we went from one dog to two dogs at that point, and then um, you got Elsa. And then after that, I adopted. Then I then I got the Wyme. So I had three dogs for a little while. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. now um, I rescued one as well. My Cooper. He's three years old. He's a Boxer Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. And now Alex has her own. Corgi, right, and now my right. daughter has a Pembroke Welsh Corgi. So we just keep bringing more dogs <laughs> into my house. At you Christmas time, how many dogs do we have in the house? Well, we one, had two, your three, three plus my six. two plus our mom's one. Yeah. So we had six dogs. We had six dogs Christmas Eve and Christmas people. Day. Wow. <laughs> that sounds like so, my kind of Christmas. Yeah. I and like you know it. what? It was absolutely perfect. The yeah. dogs That's were great. better behaved than the adults. <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah, that's, that's true. how it's very it true. is. Yeah. Really. We talk about that a lot, especially, you know, with dogs and kids and where you know they're allowed and everything we're like well sometimes dogs are better behaved so really they really are i think dogs know their boundaries better than people do i agree you should just come by my mom's place for the uh for the holidays she has well let's let me see if i can get this right uh she's had a now 14 year old pyrenees german shepherd mix 
uh, who's huge and he's awesome and Aww. he's kind of the guardian of the farm. And then uh, Nikki, his name is Zeus. Nikki, who is a uh, American bulldog, I believe. Uh, Bonnie, um, who is a deaf American bulldog. Wow. And I think those are her three staples that she's had. Um, and then now she just got uh, what is uh, Freya. Who is a, a shepherd. German shepherd? Because mom is going to start breeding shepherd pups. Okay. And then she got Apollo. You've seen a theme. Apollo and <laughs> Athena, who are uh, a male and female Pyrenees pups. Wow. Who are these? They're fluff impossibly balls. Impossibly adorable little balls of white fluff. I got Aww. to meet recently. They're going to be big white balls of white. Oh, fluff they're going to be. Soon. I told mom, I was like, you better start working some extra shifts because uh, you're going to have a lot of <laughs> yeah. very large mouths to feed. Yeah. And you yeah, reference a, farm. Does your mom have a farm in North Georgia? We call it a farm. It's it's um it's sort of just she has just a big um about 30 acres of land up in uh, the uh, the north georgia area and you know it's not an actual farm farm but you know we she has a horse and grows her has her own garden and see that's my idea of a dream right there that's (laughs) when i think about the future i'd love to have a farm chickens I don't know if I could take care of a horse. Maybe a cow and a bunch of dogs. Dogs everywhere. Dogs everywhere. Everywhere. That's, that's the dream. That's where I want to go. That's living the dream. Right yes, there. that yeah. is living the dream. So I she agree. has a so she has a horse, a current large Pyrenees, you know, the two <laughs> American bulldogs that are very large, and then now two more Pyrenees, another shepherd. So feeding animals is the bulk of where her income yeah, goes. Yeah, I imagine probably, so. Yeah. You can probably imagine. But yeah, I, so for the okay, holidays. Though. And then I show up with Stella, who's, you know, my pit. And then my sister has a pit, and so yeah, it's a dog madness <laughs> yeah. around the holidays. That that's fun. That's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, and we love it. Side note: since we're talking about families, um, you all are sixteen years apart. You said, yes. is that correct? Mm-hmm. So I have a brother who's seventeen years older than me. Wow! And he, we're both dog lovers. He's got he's always had dogs, um, and we grew up with a German Shepherd. Okay, and so it was really his dog, and you know he was so much older. It, Really wasn't my dog, but I got to love on her. Um, and so he has two giant female German Shepherds now. So yeah. So when you said you're 16 years apart, it's very rare. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I feel ya. Yeah, it <laughs> so is. Yeah. He's right. like he's like a, a crazy uncle to me. So sorry, Rob, if you're listening to this. But. <laughs> my little sister Jessica is 11 years younger than me, and that seems like an amazing. Like I babysat her, you know. Yeah. So that seems like she an has memories gap. of driving me around that I'm just like, Ooh. yep. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Now there is one more between us. Um, she's three years younger than Maria. Um, 15, 16. 14, I'm not good at math, years older than me, too, so. I'm not either. Yeah. Not a dog person, not a husband person, not a kid person, doesn't have any of them. Not a farm person. If you're listening, Danielle. Sorry. (laughs) And so you're the oldest? I am. Yeah. Yeah. We know everything, don't we? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Well, we we had to live it first. You know, the younger siblings keep the older ones young, so. There's there's very very much, right? Isn't that true? Yeah, Yeah, it's true. Yeah. (laughs) It reminded me, um, real quick, side note too, when you, is it Kira you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you got Kira and how she kind of chose you. When I got Stella, it was, people always ask if she's a rescue. Like, well, sort of. I mean, I didn't buy her, but a friend's dog had a litter, and mm-hmm. that's a, or a friend of a friend. Anyway, so I went to go see her, and one of her brothers uh, was this beautiful brindle. Amazing coat and sweet, you know, gorgeous little pup. And Stella was there, and she was also completely adorable. But I uh, picked Stella up, and she kind of wrapped her paws around my hand in like this Aww. hugging sort of way. And then I put her up against my chest and she nestled into me, uh, nestled into my, in my neck and just kind of got comfy. And I was like, oh my God. And I just melted. Like, okay, she's, she's a cuddler. This is yeah. this one. This she's one. the I'll one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am not leaving without you. Yeah, no. Yeah. And it's, it's weird. It's, you know, chemistry is obviously huge in almost any relationship. And yeah. I think that translates to your dog as well. Oh, you know, absolutely. You the right match, you know. And they know. They know when you're a dog person. Mm-hmm. They sense it. And they know they if you're not, it. too. I mean, they, they know. I can take her home right now. You're home with me. Sadie is <laughs> just like, okay. having the best day of her life right now. So. Yeah, she's nonstop grinning. <laughs> so on that note, tell us what is your favorite thing about dogs? Oh, the companionship and the love. Yes. The un, you know, unconditional love. Yeah. You know, they, they lose their mind when you walk in the door, when you're gone all day. Um, just, they need you. You need, just, I think they need you. You need them as much as they need you. Absolutely. For, for so many reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, I know there's people out there that are, that are not dog people. I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. What about you? No, you worded that perfectly. Her greetings. 
best greetings in the whole wide world. I don't know what I would ever do without them. Yeah. Um, and it could be after five minutes or it could be after ten hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they're so loyal. Yeah. Dogs are so they loyal are. and yeah. loving. Yeah, there's, you know, we, we are always very happy to come home to one another, but it can be tweaked a bit based on how your day is going. Mm-hmm. When we come home to the dogs, there's one response. Yeah. <laughs> it's excitement and happiness every yeah. time. Yeah. They're the best cure for a bad day. They I can't really think are. of anything yeah. else. I mean, maybe, you know, okay, we're hanging with dogs and drinking cider. That could also be a, <laughs> a great cure for a bad day, mm-hmm. but their greetings, it just makes everything go away. It really does. And they take over. I mean, they kind of mm-hmm. just take over your life. My poor husband, I don't think he slept in our bed in the last week. I was out of town last week. This is and, true. You know, it's very dog. true. I mean, and he's a saint because my mother will tell me all the time, I can't believe your husband will actually get out of his own bed for a dog. Oh, my gosh. But every night between like 2 and 4, the wine, Elsa, she'll, she'll get off the sofa, she'll come around the side of the bed, and she will start to whimper. To at that point, he knows it's time for me to get out of bed. So he gets out of the bed, and he'll go to the sofa that's at the end of our bed, and she gets in, and that's where she stays no. until the morning. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's the best story. I should probably be really, I should probably be nicer to my husband <laughs> all the, the time. That's the best story I've ever heard. Almost every night. Wow. It really does. But she only goes to his side and whimpers at him. She doesn't do that to you. No, she's telling him, dude, you gotta go. Get out. You're in this my is spot. Your cue. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love it. That's yeah. a great story. I mean, is... I mean, yeah, we're trying to figure out if we can fit a king size bed in our bedroom <laughs> so that the dogs can join us, but we, we still have enough this, room to sleep. What did you just send me about this bed oh that's God, like it's... meant for co sleeping with dogs? Yeah, I think hey, I saw it on Facebook or something. Thing? It's yes. 12 feet wide. <laughs> so it's basically, the, I guess, the width of two king beds put together. And it's so, for all the dogs yeah, so and all the You people. and your significant other and all the dogs can fit oh my in God. one bed. That's like a dream. <laughs> that is. I mean, as long as you're both on the same page. <laughs> it's exactly. like if you, if you want the double-sized bed and your significant other is like, no, then well, see how that and, wouldn't work. You know, there's, but... there's people who say, like, oh, I can't believe you sleep with your dogs and they're dirty and this and that. But then there's all this research I've seen, and I don't know, like, I use the term research loosely. But, like, <laughs> you know, sleeping with your dog, it just, it's like a healthy thing. And, you know, it boosts serotonin. And just, I mean, mm-hmm. being around dogs in general, I think, is amazing. And it's... it's it helps your mood. I mean, that's why there's oh, yeah. emotional Absolutely. support dogs and you when know, you dogs wake up at in the, the morning, airport to help travelers not be stressful. You know, like it's it's just their presence, their mere presence Absolutely. is so relaxing and, and comforting that why not sleep with your dog, right? Mm. Well, they're called man's best friend. And I guess nowadays, I think human's best friend exactly. would be the, the better terminology. <laughs> but they're called that for a reason. You know? Right. I mean, they definitely yeah. have come head and shoulders above the rest in terms of companionship. Yep. Agreed. Dogs Absolutely. Rule. Well, we already heard a funny story about dogs, but do you have any funny story, any other funny stories about maybe dogs coming to Urban Tree or just any funny dog stories in general? Yeah, I mean, we there's, there's, there's some type of consequence shoot. of being dog friendly in a way. Yeah. So if, if there's anything that's, a, you know, anything that's happened here or whatever that you... So we just had a doggy photo shoot here. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> fun. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Maria we want to hear organize this whole thing. I'm going to oh, We want to hear all about it. Because a couple of weeks ago, we had this really large event here in the space. And it was one of the first times since our opening day that people actually lined up before we opened. Wow. Um, for about an hour before we opened. And I noticed, I noticed that the first 20 people in line were all people that came out for the day with their dogs. It was this local pug group. And it really caught my attention. It's, um, they have an Instagram, Bodie, Bodie Spanky. These people are the nicest people ever, but they have two rescued pugs. And I think one pug is totally blind and the other is like half blind. Anyway, so this big group of dog, of dogs out the door until we open. So that caught my attention. After the event was over, I reached out to them and I said, hey, I know that you guys, you know, you guys come to visit us a lot. They're fans of our cider. I said, it's, why don't we do something? Why don't we do a collaborative event together? So we ended up, we, we ended up um, putting together an event for this March 31st. I think I was telling mm-hmm. you about this in our, yeah. in our messaging. I reached out to her and said, hey, do you guys want to do something at the cidery that's very dog related? Now, we allow dogs at the cidery, but we've never had a dog specific event. Mm-hmm. So um, we, we're going to be launching our first dog specific event where there's going to be dog vendors and probably going to be probably a good 75 to 100 dogs here. Wow. So wow. keeping our fingers crossed that it goes 
very well. Absolutely. And when, when is this? It's m- Sunday, March 31st. Yep. Right? And we're saying it's a Sunday fun day pet pot. Tea. I saw it on Facebook. Oh, and who let it the is dogs on Facebook. In? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I can't I can't take credit for making that up. No, that was actually but, Bodie and Spanky's mom who came up with that. Oh, that's great. Oh. I love it. It's okay. like King of Pups will be here vending. Yeah. There's a, uh, you mentioned before, dog treats. So that we're going to yeah. have a local dog biscuit maker who's going to be giving away. And it's all going to benefit the Vintage Pet Rescue. And so. I think Bodie and Spanky's dad does professional dog photography. Oh, he does. Wow. And we're so, going to okay. have barbecue for the humans. As well. Nice. As well as some hair of the dog cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But he actually, brought, they brought the dogs in here for, because he's a pet photographer, for a photo shoot. Oh, that's so funny. So we, we had this pet photo shoot and it was hysterical. There's oh, dogs bet. drinking cider. There's dogs by the barrels. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's, they it's were fun. cute. We and then this event them. developed from that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's really awesome. And we'll talk more about that at the end. Just remind people like how they can oh, sure. find it and, and all of that. So... Even more people can come. Yeah, we definitely want to circle circle back around to that. Do you guys travel with your dogs? And if so, what would be the best trip you've ever taken with your dog? Yes, Kiara has come with me up and down the entire eastern seaboard. Um, from beaches to upstate New York to Pennsylvania to Philly. Wow. Um, down to here. She's been on a plane three or four different times. Just because, not because I was moving or anything. I just wanted to take her on the trip with me. Yes, yeah, she's... My travel companion, actually. Have lap dog will travel. Yes, I love <laughs> it. Does she do well traveling? Yeah, she actually That's does. Great. She just sleeps the whole time. Okay. So, yeah. It was fortunate. Yeah. So Elsa goes um, Elsa goes a lot of places. Well, I was telling you all before, she comes to work with me every single day. And she loves the car. Aww. She's actually most quiet in the car Aww. than anywhere else. Um, but she spends a lot of time at the orchard actually. So during harvest season, when it's time to go up and pick and press apples, she's up there in the fields while we're oh, picking apples. Oh, I bet she has the best day She does. Ever. She does. I think she's, you know, she's always looking out for like snakes and things like that, that could be hiding underneath the apples trees, but she, she loves it. She loves the orchard. So she spends a lot of time up there doing that. She's snorting. We have a, a grunty, snorty dog here and I feel right at home because I have Frenchies. So... <laughs> That's perfect. Though. So where is y'all's orchard? It's in northeast Georgia, above okay. Lake Rabin, in a town called Mountain City. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So there's um, there's 10 acres of planted trees up there, 1,500, 1,500 apple trees, and she'll spend a good amount of time up there. Oh, You know, bet. eating trees and, I mean, eating apples and chasing bees. She loves to chase bees. Oh, no. So Hopefully that's... she's never been stung by a bee. No, she has not. Oh, good. She has not, thank good, God. Good, because that's I don't even bad. know what to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 That could be bad. Um, but, I mean, she'll travel to the beach. Beach in the mountains. Nice. But the funny thing is she's not an outdoor dog. She doesn't like to be outside. No. Oh, and you know, funny. the funny Weimariners have that yeah. prey nature and she's she's actually she's probably not. the worst Weimariner, yeah. worst hunting dog ever. She hunts for nothing. Do you have any travel tips? Maybe Jackie, you have some like plain travel tips. We always like to share with our listeners anything that can help them travel with their dogs. I mean, she was so easy. I didn't really know what I was doing. And I bought it's a little bin mm-hmm. that they told me she had to be underneath the seat. Um, she's small enough that she fit in that under the seat. And I just kind of, she slept the whole time. You know, we went to the bathroom beforehand. No water during because mm-hmm. I didn't want to have any accidents. Um, most airports nowadays also have little areas for yes. them to go. You have to find them because there's probably mm-hmm. one in the entire Atlanta <laughs> airport. Um, but she slept the whole time. So I was kind of fortunate. Um, and I put her on my lap and no one said anything to me. So I don't know if I was supposed to do that, but I did it. <laughs> I think travelers are getting more acclimated to having to seeing dogs on planes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I just walked around. Now. Yeah, I just walked around like she was supposed to be there, and yeah. that was it. Um, I mean, I'm also again fortunate. She's hypoallergenic, so mm-hmm. right. no one really could say anything to me. So that's a good comeback. If sorry, somebody ever not, said that they were yeah. allergic. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. We don't have many tips for you there. On that's that. okay. Um, she sounds like a good traveler. Yeah. I always keep a purse in my car that she fits in just in case mm-hmm. I have to stop somewhere or go somewhere that I don't want to leave her in the car. Um, but yeah. And also I found She's out easy. when I got Stella that even, even dogs that aren't hypoallergenic, the females put off less dander, which is what people are actually allergic to, they put off less hmm. dander than the males. I did not know that. I didn't yeah. know that it either. That the yeah. hair on the corgi. Great tip. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So a little easier to get away with uh, that kind of thing with female dogs. Hmm. But what about a travel-related product? Is there something like that you think is a must-have for either in the car or on the plane, wherever you go with your dog? Oh, the pop-up bowl for sure. Pop-up oh, yeah. water bowls, yeah. Treats. Um, I use a lot of lavender sometimes. Um, oh. My other guy, Cooper, he's my um, rescue. 
he he's uneasy in the car. Um, so when we take him to the dog park, so whatever, he's up and he's alert and his bridge is up. Um, so I'll put a little bit of lavender essential oil on him before oh, we go in the car ride just to calm tip. him down a little bit. It's more natural than giving mm-hmm. the Benadryl, which I've heard a lot of sure, some sure. people will do that. Um, and it works great on him. Mm-hmm. I use it for her during storms. I had no uh, idea that worked yeah, on that. That's yeah, amazing. It does. Yeah. Yeah. They have calming toys that are actually, uh, that you can put the drops on, the lavender yeah. drops. Yeah. And I use that with my puppies when, you know, when they're not with their litter, with their mom, when you take them home, mm-hmm. that calms them. And there's also um, like diffusers that are just for dogs yes. too. Mm-hmm. So that's great. That's a they good They also tip. have those weighted, you know how they have like weighted blankets for dogs oh, I have that one. have anxiety? <laughs> Um, they do have weighted uh, clothing for dogs too, which oh, I did buy yeah. a weighted vest for Elsa once. Okay. Because, but I think Weimaraners just are naturally anxious anyway. Yeah. So yeah. It didn't Aww. really do anything. For I've, them. <laughs> I've never met one that wasn't sweet, but also very high strong. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. It's Aww. definitely it's I, I, it's not a breed for everyone. That's for sure. But it's um, a lot of energy. Yeah. You know, a lot of energy. Yeah. So in all that travel, do you have a favorite place? Is there a, a place that you're like, man, this is the most dog friendly or they have this really cool dog, whatever, anything like that that sticks out in your mind? I haven't been there yet. There's this place in Atlanta. I think it's called Fetch. Fetch. Oh. Yes. <laughs> have you guys heard of it? We, yeah, yes. we're hopefully meeting with them soon. Nice. Oh, nice. One of our cider makers, Eric, um, he's a member there. He raves about it. Oh, it's yeah. great. Um, everything about the service, for the dogs, for mm-hmm. the humans, the whole nine yards. Um, I haven't been there yet, no, but... You should um, check it out. Yeah. It's great. It's like paradise okay. for everybody. It's I've been amazing. Right. Yeah, I've heard a lot about mm-hmm. it as well. I mean, the area of the city that I live in, um, I live by Chastain Park. They okay. don't have a dog friendly, you know, area. Mm-hmm. They do not. Really? No. Nope. Chastain Park. No, nope, they do not. It's been it's been in the works for years hmm. um, to have you know like a big pet park, and they just can't get it. As far as I know, most recently, they cannot get wow. it to actually happen. And people in the park really, really want it. Now, one sure. of the nicest places, I think, here in Atlanta is that big area in Piedmont Park. Yeah. Where you can take your pets. I mean, that is a great We were just down go. there for the rescue dog games last oh, weekend. Rescue dog games. Oh, my gosh. It was so much fun. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, it was, oh, it was great. There were see, tons of dogs. That. And, that sounds so cool. Yeah, they had actual games for dogs mm-hmm. and competitions. And, and it was all at Piedmont Park and Park Tavern. That's 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 yeah. Well, that's always been a really area. great friendly dog friendly area. We heard about through Randall, right? Yeah. So our our friend Randall Ray owns Puppy Pals, and the last episode was it's an app. Yeah, it's oh, okay. an app that basically does what we do, <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. and, or we do what she's been doing. Right. Um, so she highlights dog friendly establishments mm-hmm. through her app, and so it it tracks where you are, and then it will tell you wherever the dog friendly places are near oh, you. Okay. So it's happening? called Puppy Pals. Okay. Yeah, it's great. It's a free, yep, it's a free app. And you can become like a Puppy Pal certified business and get a sticker on your door. And then that way people know that you're dog friendly. Oh, wow. I love that. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll have Mm -hmm. to connect you with her because she's wonderful. And so we uh, heard about it through her and she had a booth there and there were tons of dog vendors. And so that area is great. I'm surprised Chastain isn't more dog friendly. But you know what Chastain has? Is uh, Bar Taco over by they do. Chastain and they're they dog do. friendly. So we've, it's funny how we've Bar- already blown them up. Bar Taco okay. seems to come up in our episodes. So we may need to uh, pay them a visit and, uh, yeah, take the dog there and get some tacos. But that sounds yeah. good. Well, tell us about Urban Tree. We want to hear all about it and how you guys started it and how, how did this um, become a thing? So the idea for Urban Tree was actually. It was actually my husband's idea, Tim. He's the third owner. He's just not here today. He is. Um, he was a hobby wine and cider maker in our basement okay. for about three to four years. And then just honestly said to me over coffee on a Saturday morning, hey, I have an idea. How about let's do this, you know, more on a, more on a bigger scale. The city of Atlanta doesn't have, you know, a cider mm-hmm. manufacturer. What do you think about doing that? And, it, you know, initially I said, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but fast forward, here we are. And we here decided to open it. Yeah. Here in the city where we live. And then we brought Jackie into the equation. Uh, and now we are coming up on our third year anniversary. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Do you find that the, I feel like what's happening in craft beer is, seems to be happening in the, in the cider world as well. That there's now all these different varieties and all these Ways you can tweak it and manipulate it to, to give it more of this or more of that. And do you feel that that's a very 
I don't know that that's an accurate statement that, you know. The cider industry in the States is definitely not where the craft beer industry is. Sure. Right now. Um, there are pockets of the States, Washington State, Oregon, Michigan, North Carolina, Virginia, and then New England States, because that's where all your apples are grown. Mm -hmm. That's where most of your cider pockets are right now that are, it's not only um, just an alternative to wine and beer, but it's an accepted third beverage. Um, the South, specifically Georgia and Atlanta, is it's a brand open market. Um, so we are the first in the city, third in the entire state, but all these other cideries from the North are realizing it's an open market. Tennessee, Florida, just mm -hmm. the whole South, not Georgia specifically. Cider is made from apples, and beer is made from barley and hops and grains. So you can do a lot with that. You can also do a lot with apples. So the craft beer industry right now is actually... The same sales is actually their growth right now, whereas... Um, maintaining. Maintaining, thank you. The cider industry in America, specifically in the South, has grown by 4% in the past uh, 52 weeks. Wow. So um, we are actually seeing a little bit of a growth, which is nice. So if you go over to Europe, where cider is from, and it's more popular, and it's a billion-dollar industry over there, they'll be like, you do what with your cider? You put hops in it? You put peppers in it? Like, why are you doing that? So that How having, dare you. Yeah, <laughs> having the different flavors like that is something that we are having fun with over here in the States. I think it's worked well for us, okay. um, considering some of the flavors that we have. But yeah, you do have a range of different things that we can do. And that's the creative, artistic part of the job. There's a science part with the fermentation and all that fun. Um, but then the art aspect of it. I think that's a great segue into telling us about some of the products you have because we're sitting here with two different flights of ciders and yes, she mentioned peppers and so I'm drinking one that has habanero peppers in it and as a spicy lover, I, I'm just dying right now. Like this is great. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the different products that you have because you know a lot of people just know cider as like the bottled ciders which is is fine but they don't know everything you can do with cider right so great way to put that at urban tree we do make all of our ciders here from our apples at our orchard that maria mentioned earlier we currently have 10 different ciders on draft a couple of those are seasonals and only available in the tasting room about seven or eight of them are year-round they'll be available all the time you can get them at Publix, whole foods kroger's all your favorite restaurants and bars. Um, the reason we have so many different flavors is because we want someone, um, I want you to have a favorite and you to have a different favorite and my favorite and um, one for everybody. Yeah. So we have a European style dry, which is our ode to the English style drier ciders that if you went over to Europe, you would find. That is the reason why we started making ciders because that's how ciders are supposed to be. They're supposed to be dry and barney and farmy and not this sweet, sugary, hurt mm -hmm. your stomach that most American ciders are, that's the way that they are and that's what most people think. Um, and actually, ciders over in England are dry and they're men, men and women drink them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to get a guy here to drink it, we have to educate people, which is what you were just saying, which is mm -hmm. a great explanation that many people don't know this. However, we do have a sweet one. I always say I sold my soul to make it. Um, but that's because, like I said, we had to make one for the people. Sure. And that's what they're expecting. But it is a semi-sweet. And the way that we sweeten it is with apple juice. So there's no added sugars. There's no caramel coloring. There's no high fructose corn. It's all natural. And then we have a couple that are barrel aged. We put them in rum barrels to pick up the complexity of the barrel, um, the vanilla and caramel notes. And we do have a hops one, which um, you hop heads are either gonna love or hate. It's more bitter and earthy. Um, the habanero haze, which you were mentioning, um, is actually a great story. Maria, um, Tim, it was his idea. I was like, that sounds gross. No one's gonna drink it. <laughs> I am very happy to say I was wrong with that statement. Um, and it is our number, it's our number two seller. Wow, um, Maria really? and I picked habaneros. Uh, we cleaned them for mm -hmm. days. For days. That wow. was a fun. That sounds fun. Yeah. And Tim bought, <laughs> Tim bought about 20 bushels of habaneros from oh my the gosh. farm next to us because we didn't have the recipe created yet, so mm -hmm. we didn't know how many we needed. We're like, okay, before they you know, start going bad, let's peel them and freeze them. So that's what... But Tim was like, well, I got to go work on Monday. You guys have fun with that. Oh, no. <laughs> so um, we peeled them. It was fun. And we now have habaneros three years later from that same batch. Wow. Probably enough for the next three years as well. Well, and I have to say it's very subtle. It really yeah. is. I mean, for 
for someone who eats and eats spicy food all the time, I think um, my spicy gauge is a little bit off because yeah. I can eat something super spicy, and if he tries it, he thinks like he can't, yeah. he yeah. can't handle it. And I, I'm like, oh, it's like a little spicy. It's a little, you know, there's a little bit of heat. <laughs> this is just very subtle. It's just got like a little taste of it, and it's, it's a, just it's very balanced. It's a very it balanced is. cider. I mean, there's it one is. thing when you take a spice and you add it to whatever a food, mm-hmm. and it completely takes over. Yes, whatever you're eating or drinking, then it then all you taste is heat. Right, and that's not fun. And that no. that's not what no. we were looking for. We were looking to. Had have, have the spice be an accent to the flavor, and that's exactly so you get what it is. Get the ginger on the front, mm-hmm. a little bit of kick in the back. Yep, it just makes it well balanced, and it's so drinkable and yummy. I love it; it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it pairs really well with barbecue. It's actually, oh, it's actually great! Now that's what I want, for and you can cook with it <laughs> yeah. as well. We it cook makes with great. it a lot. Really? Tacos. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. funny. The first time I ever tried any cider that I can recall, I was I was in London and uh, I on a school trip. I was about eighteen, and I had been drinking a bunch of these heavy dark English beers, you know, and porters and stouts and on ESBs and everything in between and all that. And then one day I thought, well, I know cider's big here. I'll try, I'll try a cider. And I hated it. It was so <laughs> like dry and bitter. And, you know, I, I it was mangers or what is it? What, one of the, one of the, big ones. One of the original mm-hmm. big, you know, English ciders. And I've, I've come a long way since then, but my first experience with it was, you know, for the longest time, uh, I don't do ciders. No, yeah. no, no ciders for me. Cause I, right. But also you, you create that, contrast too from all the other stuff I've been drinking mm-hmm. is even more pronounced you know yeah see if you were to walk in here with that mentality I love when people do that because we're creating an experience of something new for them here whereas if that's their experience I'm like okay great just do me a favor take one sip what kind of wine do you drink what kind of beer do you drink let me give you taste you know we have a couple different flavors um for you if you don't like it that's fine I have a cooler full of beer just give me one sip Give me two minutes of, to talk to you, and if you want a beer, I'm happy to serve that for you. But thank you for listen, to listening to me. So um, nice. we I welcome that. everybody. Yeah. Um, but we are one of the only places in the city, one of the brewery models that have a full bar. So you don't have to come here and just get cider. We ask that you try it, but we do have some really good cider cocktails. Oh, um, nice! Some beers, and our whole bar is all local. So yes, our ciders are on draft, but then we support local breweries, and we have all the great Georgia craft beers that are made in the state here, as well as 1821 syrups and shrubs and things like that for our cocktails, and all of our spirits are made in Georgia as wow. well. Wow, love that. Yeah. That's great. Really so cool. everyone can come here and enjoy something, Absolutely. no matter what you like. Yeah, yeah. And I love that. You know, if you don't know about ciders, you can come in tell you what you like and what you normally drink and you're most likely going to find a cider that you will you like. Really, you really are. I mean, just based on of, what you normally drink. Of course our drink. goal is the conversion. Yeah. But even if I could, you know, if I could get somebody to at least try it, find something sure. that they they're not going to go, "Oh, I I don't ever want to have a cider." Mm-hmm. May not be their first choice if they're, you know, in Publix and they go to grab a six-pack, but it's not off the table anymore because mm-hmm. they've tried something that is not as sweet as what they expected it to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And see, my, my first choice is always cider when we go out somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. typically Ours urban too. tree <laughs> if it's somewhere <laughs> local. So obviously you're dog owners and dog lovers, but all the same I want to ask, why do you feel it's important for people to be able to bring their dogs with them when they come to urban tree? It's for the same reason I want to bring my best friend when I go out to drink or eat. I mean, why can't I can bring her, but I can't bring her? I point it to my sister and my dog. <laughs> um, I mean, they. I want to get them out of the house. I want them yeah. to experience things. I mean, Sadie running around here with a big, big grin on her face. <laughs> uh, she's so yeah, happy. But she's so happy. I, that makes me happy. She should get to experience that just as much as anybody. Good answer. I think, I I like think it. people, you know, a lot of people, dogs or their children. Mm-hmm. And and you're not you want to go out for the day you want to spend the day you know having fun you don't want to leave your kids behind so it's okay well if I could take my dog along with me then they don't have to stay in the house all day and people just like I think having the option to do that mm-hmm. especially when the weather's nice you know get the dogs out get outside of the house and get the dogs out too yeah yeah and I mean there's more days where I'll get out of the house because they need to get out of the house, which makes <laughs> right. me motivated yeah. to go somewhere yeah. and do something active. Sure. So it's a great back and forth. Yeah. What do you think people should know before bringing their dogs to Urban Tree? We open the garage door up out in our tasting room. So on days where it's really hot, it's hot inside and outside. So we do have doggy bowls to keep them hydrated. Um, but if you have a doggy bowl, bring them with you. We'll make sure it stays full of water. But just with the hot, hot, hot days, keeping it 
cool and mm -hmm. um, comfortable for them. Awesome. Mm. Yeah. And aside from where this cider is actually made, I think the way it looks, dogs are actually allowed anywhere that humans are allowed, correct? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. right. I, I, I shook my head. I was expecting her to say yeah. We both thought we were going to speak. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, we just did a, little, a lot of nodding. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and then some people have different rules about this is their dog-friendly area, you know, but then they, they there might be one specific part, but the but it looks like kind of free reign for the most part. Or, right, or the pups. right. And that's why when I we first started, I said that you're dog welcoming, not just dog friendly, because there is a difference and we're finding that. And that's really what we want to highlight those places where and dog dogs tolerant, are really, right, like, right. Uh, we want to highlight those, those places who are, you know, really welcoming. Like they want you to bring your dogs and, yeah. and you all just exude that. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us uh, where to find you on social media and, you know, uh, how to connect and follow and learn more and whatever. And about the event too. Yeah, and again about you, the event. So we are really active on Facebook and Instagram at Urban Tree Cider. Um, and all of our events, all of our, if you have a question, um, reach out to us via those platforms. We do respond. We are very, very active. If you want to know our hours or if we're open or closed or special events, uh, I already said that, that are going on and new flavors that are coming out, that would be the best way to find that. Um, the event that you're talking about is our dog paw tea. Talk about that more? Yeah. Um, so we'll have King of Pups here vending dog treats. Um, we have Big Daddy Biscuits here giving out complimentary dog biscuits for um, a, a small donation to Vintage Pet Rescue. We have Kiss, uh, Chris Cattell here, a uh, photographer, doing uh, pet photographs. What else do we have? We have who's the, bar we have who's the barbecue? We have Sibo's barbecue truck come in for us. Humans. We'll also have some hair of the dog cocktails. Our cider mimosa and our cider uh, bloody mary. Mm -hmm. And it some is doggy giveaways, poop bags, water bowls, the necessities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's on Sunday, March thirty first, from twelve thirty to six thirty. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. We'll be we'll be here. Yeah. We will <laughs> be here for that. And uh, tell us a little bit about where the name came from, Urban Tree. I'm curious. Ooh, you know, we struggled with a name. It's like everything, naming your dog, naming your child, <laughs> name, naming whatever. And um, we had made our way through probably, what, 100 different apple varieties. And then I was driving to the beach with my teenage daughter, and she said to me, well, what about Urban Tree? And we're like, we like it. Oh, We like it. And then the whole brand for us just kind of evolved from the name. Mm -hmm. You know, the cityscape, the tree mm -hmm. coming out of the cityscape. Yeah, that's how the that's how the name Urban Tree was born, and it just I love it, it. just worked. Mm -hmm. just it does worked. work. It's mm -hmm. great. Thank you so much. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time and for all the information. It's really been awesome being here and meeting you, and we look forward to your event on the thirty first. We'll thanks for having for us. Yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Yeah. All right, that is Urban Tree Cidery in Atlanta, Georgia. Be sure to check them out and bring your pup. That's it for episode five. Thank you for listening. And remember, if you want to take Fido on a trip, but you're worried it could all unravel, just listen to us have Dog Will Travel. <laughs>